Howdy friends, welcome to another exciting night of Let's Play Mass Effect Andromeda. This is episode number 59, and we are still here on Aya, in uh, the city which I guess is also called Aya, or Aya City, or something like that. And let's take a look and see what we have left to do. Um, not sure if we can talk to Ephra yet, but there is some stuff to do over here, including speaking to the last Arbiter, so let's head over that way. Uh, we could use the fast travel station, but it's a nice city. We haven't run around here too much yet. Might as well see the sights a little more. I'm also thinking I may do a crafting episode tonight. Uh, we've seen that already. Which uh, I'm thinking might not take a full episode, but just to be on the safe side, I'll probably do it separately anyway. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Ah, governor's office. I really hear what they're saying, but somebody's taking a break and they sound annoyed about it. Arbiter Renav told me to expect you. I prepared a data pad detailing our laws. Read it fully. Alright. Data pad is right there. Um, this world and all who live on it agree to abide by the laws, customs, and regulations of a civilized society. Ensure a voice for each family within our society and gives them certain invaluable rights. Page 1 of 5,983. Alright, so late reading then. And I guess we completed the task. Got some XP. Yay for us. Pathfinder, as you can imagine, your arrival raised concerns from Aya's people. I thought I'd proven they have nothing to worry about. You are one person. They want the Nexus to hear our voices. We've set up terminals in the city so people can leave messages for your people on the Nexus. I'd appreciate if you take a look and forward their communications to your people. Alright, a new task. <laughs> hey, you know how much I love tasks. Probably should have picked that up before. Um, Alright, well hopefully this is a quick one. What else do we have here? A locked door, governor's office. I guess that's about it. Okay, let's do this really quickly then. Take one last sweep around the city, and then we will head to, um, I think the Moshai was going to escort us to the vault, or meet us at the vault. Something like that. Okay, let's download this. Um, I'll let you guys read this one. Edit content, then forward. This message will never be read by the Pathfinder, much less reach the Nexus. Well, that's fair enough. I'm a, a busy individual, so I skimmed it. Give it to my crew to read. Um, yeah, I don't know why I would edit it, but I'm not going to do that because that's... <laughs> that sounds like it wouldn't do much good and could do a lot of bad in a lot of different ways. Okay. And there's one more over here. Be nice if there was a way to like have the data pads read to you as you move around. That would be convenient. Uh, a log of resistance members' messages. I'll download that, and I will scroll through this one as well. And we'll forward that also unedited. I wonder if this uh, affects anything, depending on if you edit it or unedit it. I really hope so, because otherwise. What's the point? That is a dead end. John, every resistance recruitment poster. Did he ever contact you? <laughs> no, that man is impervious to flirtation. Why are the good ones always dense? I hear he had a thing for the repository curator. Never went anywhere. She's just. Guess Jal and the curator were a thing, or he wants them to be a thing. Did I just run into a dead end again? So. Hmm. 
another hollow terminal. I guess I didn't realize there were so many of these things. For Pathfinder eyes only, but I'll share it with you guys anyway. Some of them don't like us, some of them do. Pavoa or uh, Vajka wants to be friends. And who's over here? At least this one is by the ship docks anyway. The resistance needs volunteers. Do we read this? I'm not sure if we read this on the way out or not. All right, last message. And something to scan around here too. We'll do that in a second. Why are you here? Who controls the initiative? They don't want us on a varl. And they want us to show our technology to them. All right, what can we scan here? Oh, this. An Angaran mural. All right. Well, I think that's about it for uh, the city of Aya. Yep, that's all the quests we have. Let's go ahead and continue the main quest and take the shuttle to the vault. No monoliths, though. This will be quite easy if that's the case. However, I don't suspect it'll be as easy as it seems. I also didn't look and see if there is a um, a viability meter for Aya. That would give a good sense as to whether this is a planet that can be fully explored or whether it's just like a small plot-related planet in between major worlds. I haven't brought anyone here in over 20 years. There's always been an active display for Aya, but we could never affect it. Let's see what we can do. Sam? Yes, this is new. Is it similar to the vault on Eos? Tell me, what are you seeing? It's been as long since I've been to Eos, I don't really remember, but it seems fairly similar. So let's go with this one. I think what we need to figure out is what's different. Tell me, what do you see? The vaults. They're a network, as you discovered. However... They're not connected to each other, but to this place. This image was on a relic the Archon showed me. He called it Meridian. And it looks like Aya's vault is the only one that's fully connected to it. And it's terraforming, doing what it was meant to do. The vault on Eos is also present, but changed. Our interfacing with it has affected its connection. What do you think, Professor? I think that Meridian is the control center for all the vaults. Could be. Their diagram doesn't really match reality, though. It looks like both vaults are connected to it. I don't understand how one is a direct connection and one is not, but... It's kind of like the star maps way f from way back in uh, Knights of the Republic, how the um, characters would talk about them looking one way, even though they really didn't actually look that way. I think there's just a little bit of a, a disconnect between the writing and graphics departments. Thank you. This is unbelievable. If we can get to Meridian, maybe we can turn everything on from there. Make Helios live. Wait, Ryder. The Archon knows where it is. He's already been there. What? Where? Meridian? Of course. That's why he tortured me. He thought I could help him use it. Because he can't. Meridian is my people's best chance for survival. We have to take it from him. Agreed. Such power in the hands of such evil could mean the end of your people. And mine. Well, so far, the process we've been doing seems pretty effective, going volt by volt. But... If this Archon already has control of the Meridian, or possession of the Meridian, then uh, we probably don't want to let him keep his hands on it for much longer. The Archon is a menace, and I've had it with being lorded over.
You're going to need that relic I saw. The Resistance might have intel on the whereabouts of Archon's ship. I'll talk to Ephra and secure his full cooperation. Meet me there. So, is the Eye of Vault already operational then? Because if so, shouldn't it be terraforming the planet more than just one city? Like, uh, the rest of the planet did not look that hospitable. Alright. Back to Resistance HQ then. Is that the other end of the city? I believe it is. It is. Okay, so... If I run to a quick travel point, we are going to use it this time. Is that one? Nope, that's just a thing about the mural. Very cool, but not what I'm looking for. Oh well. I'm going to start running and I'm sure we'll run into one at some point. And if not, then we'll take the long way there. At least the long way really isn't that much of a long way. There we go. And... Are these... What do I click on? Oh, I see. Those little triangles mean fast travel. Loading. Sometimes the fast travel takes almost as long as just running wood. I still have a little further to go. I deserve to be told. You had no right to keep it secret from me. It's an ongoing investigation. I meant no disrespect. Did Jal know? Of course not. Neither did the human. I could have kept Sam to myself, you know. This is different. Not your business. It is now. We need to find the Ket command ship. Tell him the truth about my capture. Moshai, please. It may be our only route to the Archon. One of my men helped the Ket take her. A resistance commander named Venterev. So we have a traitor in our midst. The Archon wanted her knowledge of Remnant Tech. But why would Ven betray her? I don't know. That's why I kept it quiet. I'm working to capture him. Make him answer for what he did. You know where he is? Kadar report. My contacts are hunting him. Contacts? You can't trust anyone there. They deserted our cause, our people. And now they're ruled by exiles from your galaxy. Ven may know how to find the Archon and his ship. We can't leave this to a pack of renegades and outlaws. So it seems like there are uh, some exiles from the Angaran resistance as well. And I suppose they've teamed up with our own Milky Way exiles. I'm a little new to the galaxy. Where did Ven go exactly? Kadara Port is a trading outpost. We abandoned it when the Ket invaded. Some of us went back. Deserters. Scavengers. They don't support Aya. How did Exiles from the Nexus wind up there? Bad luck for everyone. Guess I'm not the first human to meet the Angara then. I need the relic that leads to Meridian, and I can handle my people. Let me do this. I don't like it. I don't care. The Pathfinder is right. I'll transmit my files on Kadara Port to your ship. Our traitor could have useful information. We need him alive. That's up to him. Be safe, Pathfinder. As for you, Ephra, we're not done. Hey, level up, level 31. And I guess we're heading to that port next. So, it's not much of a lead, but it is a lead. I have tier 5 research projects unlocked. I thought that was level 30, not 31. Can I touch this? They're not looking, so. Um, Kadara Port, I guess they're trying to recruit from the deserters. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Casualty report from Vold. And people are getting nervous. Alright, well, I am actually kind of excited to uh, 
craft some new armor then. Maybe some weapons too. So you know what I think I might do? And we can do this from the Tempest actually. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of this episode a crafting episode. So uh, hopefully it won't take as long as I'm dreading it taking, I, but I, I feel like it should be fairly quick. So as uh, those of you who watched previous Let's Plays know, can I could travel here? Yeah. Um, I like to give a heads up for my crafting episodes. So if you're not into crafting, you can go ahead and fast forward to the end. I promise I won't do uh, anything else important the rest of this episode. Um, but if you'd like to stick around, you're more than welcome to. And we'll do some crafting and make sure we are in tip-top shape for the second half of the game. How do I get back to the Tempest? Oh, I guess... Okay, so maybe there might be a little bit of... Um, docking access controls... Is that how I get to the Tempest? Is that where it's sending me? I think it is. So there's like an automatic cutscene or something. We'll see that first, but otherwise I'd like to get crafting. I do want to make that N7 armor, which seems specifically tailored to biotics. And then if I have enough points left over, I want to upgrade this rifle. We also have to do a little bit of research into those um, special upgrades. Director things. Tan, good news. The Angara opened an embassy for us on Aya. That is a surprise. What are their expectations? <laughs> Don't be yourself. <laughs> they survived the Scourge and the Ket and rebuilt their civilization. Don't forget it. Appeal to their pride. Sensible. I will gather envoys and send them to Aya. Thank you, Pathfinder. We'll take it from here. I'm thinking that whatever we discover about Sam or about um, the benefactor can't be too incriminating to Director Tan or any of the other major characters really that we've met on the Nexus because like, because it seems like you can do it more or less. Well, actually, that's not true. I was going to say you could do it any time in relation to the main quest, it being a side quest, essentially. An important one, but still a side quest. But that's not true. I guess you, you need all the Sam memories to advance it, which means you have to have gone to more planets. So, so I was going to say they would have to tape all of those twice then with Director Tan and whoever his replacement would be. But that's actually not true. So maybe he is involved. But that will be determined later. Okay, crafting station is actually right back here. And uh, like I mentioned before, I've never actually done crafting in this game so or research. So um, we'll kind of figure it out together then. So I believe the first step is to develop these items, and those take the research data. And then once you have like a schematic for an item, you can use your materials that we've been harvesting every chance we've gotten to uh, actually craft them. We have some research for available for the Nomad as well. That's interesting. Um, we should probably get some of those, but let's... Are we in research or development? I thought we were in research, because this has like materials on it. Actually, we're in development. Okay. Yep, so research first. Okay, we want... And augmentations, those are the upgrades I was talking about. So, weapon when hovering gives you a better rate of fire. Hovering is very effective, but I don't usually remember to do it. Um, or you can put it on... Now, does arms mean, I guess it doesn't mean arms in the weapon sense, because it already has weapon listed there. I guess it means arms in the literal sense. A lot of these are, whoops, nope, nope, don't research that. A lot of these are when hovering. Okay, so yeah, the automatic weapons are the type. I wish there, I, I wonder if there is, like, a way to um, see if a weapon is automatic or non-automatic before using it. Stuns melee attackers. I don't get attacked by melee too often. All right, I'll look into these in a second. But first, I want to make sure I spend my data on the stuff I really want. Uh, and that's the N7 stuff, because we determined that these... Yeah, this is health and melee. There was one really good remnant set, I seem to recall. Yeah, this is really good defensively. Damage resistance, health regen, shield regen, delay reduction. Kind of weird looking, though. 
I wonder what it looks like when it's equipped. Alright, it looks a little better once you upgrade it, but... Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the good old Milky Way technology. Tried and true. And get some uh, N7 armor. So after all, Ryder was an N7, and you know, once an N7, always an N7, I suppose. Plus it's pretty cool looking. Classic Mass Effect armor. Alright, now... The thing is, I only have 820 research data. And it looks like you have to research all of them, which, well, that's actually going to be pretty expensive. If I could go right to number five, this wouldn't be so bad, but because I can't, I'm going to have to, uh, I guess, in, buy some of this now and do some later. That kind of sucks. Um, materials are no big deal. I have plenty of materials, but I might have to find more Milky Way research data. Actually, before we do any of this, let's go ahead and see what we have with our thing over here, strike team missions. I may have to look up ways to uh, get more Milky Way data. Alright, he leveled up. Got, again, I assume that's mission XP. Got mission funds and loot boxes, whatever those are. Hope I can actually use those, and those aren't just for... Um, aren't just like for this mini game. Like it needs to affect the main game in some way. Is this the loot boxes? It is, okay. So we'll open those in a second. Let's send these guys out first. And 74%. What did I just hit? I want to send a strike team. Oh, I think I already sent the first guy, whatever. Yeah, I did. Oh, well. All right, let's go ahead and open the, um, Okay, credit loot box. Do we get credits from that? Clear. Oh, I guess we have to open them from our inventory. All right, then. Let's... Okay, I guess... It just opened them right there and gave us stuff. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, we're still at 54. Anyway, back to research. Can you... I guess you can't really buy data. It's a shame, because you can buy materials, but it's not materials I need, it's the, the data. Hopefully I don't need... what? what's the weapon I like? Is there a way to see that? I guess I have to go to the loadout area, right? Which is not over here, it's across the ship. So this is why crafting always takes so long. It's not the crafting itself, it's like figuring out what you actually want to craft. Okay, Cyclone, that's right. I have a Cyclone 4. So I need, let me see if there was anything that said automatic or not automatic on it. Um, not that I can see. That would be a very, a view details. I mean, the description kind of implies it, but it doesn't say it explicitly. Let's see what kind of data I need. Hopefully it's not Milky Way data, because that would be bad. Weapons. Um, crap, it is. Cyclone. Yeah. <laughs> so everything I need basically requires Milky Way data. That sucks. I mean, I guess I, cause, like, I have you know almost 2,000 Helios research data, but everything I want to make is from... I guess I could make augmentations with these that I could use. I wonder, can you research um, like weapons upgrades or just weapons? I guess just weapons. Ooh, pointy. And yeah, maybe I should invest in um, some remnant weapons then. Hmm. I guess you could always make a lower version to test it out. See how it goes, and if you like it, use a uh, better one. All right, well, I know I definitely want to make better armor, and I can probably find a Cyclone 5 somewhere anyway eventually. It just says loot, whereas the armor seems to only be craftable. So let's go ahead and research that now. Um, and let's see, this gives me 
Uh, 15% recharge speed. The arms cost half as much, roughly, and give me a little less than half as much. Helmet is also the same thing. Legs are the same thing. Okay, so I, it seems that you get the best bang for your buck with the chest piece. Right? Does it start with 50 here? Yeah. Because it's double the cost, but you get a little more than double um, the reward, at least at max level. Or at least for the recharge speed. I didn't look at the other two. But anyway, let's go ahead and research. Cost. Yep, I'm sure. Yay, okay. And we'll research that. Continue. Okay. And research that. Watching all my research data go away. Maybe when I'm interacting with the exiles, I'll be able to find some more Milky Way data, because that's what I'm really short on right now. All right, so we've done that tree, and we're down to only 220 Milky Way research data. Oh, it's really unfortunate that, like, nothing I have... Like, I have more data for other species, for the Remnant and for the uh, Helios cluster, than I do for my own people. That's kind of not really sensible. I wish I could just, like, run around the Nexus forever scanning things and get more data that way, but I'll look up how to get more later on. Um, for now, though... I guess I might as well try to make like, arms or something. Or... Sure, why not? I guess the question is, do I want to do... Because this has plus 2% max shields. 3% power damage. I'm wondering if it's better to go straight up one tree, or just for the time being to make a lesser set of armor. They don't seem to take many many resources. A lot of copper, I guess. I don't think the armor I have now really affects much anyway. At least in terms of biotic abilities. Alright, let's go ahead and do... Wait, there's an advanced N7 chest now? Oh. So once you reach higher levels, you can research even better stuff. Wow, okay. <laughs> that makes sense, because I know there are a lot more levels in this game. Alright, well... We'll definitely need some more research data to unlock those, though. For now, let's just go through and unlock the first level of each. Or, yeah, I think we'll have just enough. And then, sure, let's get slightly better legs. If I was really worried about min-maxing, I would spend more time comparing these against the ones I'm currently wearing. But we're only playing on normal mode, so it's not really worth it. Um... All right, as far as augments go, I'd like to make some Helios augments because those remnant weapons sound pretty cool. And I want to have a use for my Helios research data. Um, projectiles now travel in a ballistic arc. That could be dangerous. Is there friendly fire in this game? Increases clip size, but only when special ammo is active. I don't use special ammo that much. Probably should, but don't. Um, when the current ammo clip is empty, drain 5% of health and refill the clip. Does that give me an option? Does that mean when your ammo is entirely out? Interesting. Um, this gives you huh, different effects for shotguns versus non-shotguns. 10% more damage for 10 less rate of fire. I, mean, I guess that's better, because it's better to do your damage qu more quickly. Well, but you're... That's kind of like a... You're almost breaking even there. In fact, I think you're actually slightly worse when you multiply those out. 10% um, weapon accuracy when shields are low. So these aren't really that good. Most of them have very niche uses. Um, changes weapon projectile to seeking plasma bolts. I guess that's good. Um, when health and shields are full, you do more damage. Uh, or you could apply it to an armor when your health is 20% or lower. So it doesn't happen too often. Well, I don't know. I'm not really a huge fan of any of these. I guess the plasma one could be cool. Let's take a look at what the other augmentations are. Um, weapon now fires a sustained energy beam that accurately deals rapid damage to the target. 
damage over time is the same, but it gives you more stability. I kind of like the feel of my rifle, though, so I mean, that might be good for like my pistol. I'll worry about that later. Um, cryo ammos. This is kind of good to combo if you use cryo ammo. On jump melee, you do cryo blast. This is good for disruptor ammo. This is good for incendiary ammo. When your clip empties, you restore 25% shields. Or when an enemy is killed, you restore shields. Um, here you have a chance to gain more ammo when your shields are broken, so kind of the opposite. When current clip is full... Okay, that's interesting now. This isn't as good, because I don't... Hopefully my health won't be 30% or less very often. I guess you could kind of make some interesting uh, combos around this. If you purposely try to get your health down to 30, get your shields back up again right away, like get into cover, and then keep it there as long as possible. But kind of, it would feel weird playing and not wanting my health to go back up again, like having to avoid health packs and um, safe areas. So I don't even know if I really want any of these. I guess I could get this one as a... So basically the idea is to reload, use your... I guess I do do that a lot. I reload, use my powers, and then... um, And then empty the ammo. Let's go with that. Alright. See, I don't want to use... All the best ones are probably here, right? These are when hovering... Um, each projectile fired is now a grenade. Interesting. Sticky grenade. It's like, this is nice. And this is nice, too. Increases weapon accuracy by 10% when standing still. These are nice static bonuses. Ammo refills automatically after delay, a delay, but, research, but reduces your clip size significantly. Interesting ideas here, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, like I said, none of them are really all that great. Is a clip just the current? Like, I think that's just the current bit of ammo you have, not your full supply. Because it says when your ammo clip is empty, not all your ammo. But I already... Is it like an instant reload then? I don't know. Um, give that a try and see what it does. I wonder if you can take these out once you... But these are, I guess, only useful on a weapon? Um, and again, that's not really useful unless my health is super low. All right, well, let's just go ahead and make my better armor for now. And uh, once we have more research data, and once I can do some research on um, automatic weapons, I might look into these a little more. I might do it off screen too, so you guys don't have to sit here and listen to me ramble the entire episode, but you were warned. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and craft them. Development. Um, we already do have actually a lot of schematics. Not sure where we got these, I guess we found them. We can make shotguns, we can make... What's this mean? Everything? Must mean everything. Yeah, we can make a few uh, good assault rifles. This takes a lot of iron. A little bit of ezo. But I just don't know if it's automatic or not. We haven't even looked at the um, the Nomad stuff yet. Alright, so let's make our new chest piece first. And we want the N7 chest mark 5. This one gives you more XP. I don't have any... I'm not even sure what that is. Maybe something we find on the later planets. Uranium. Hmm. I guess I could also do like those um, space exploration things in between episodes. 
maybe find some Milky Way data, Milky Way data there. But yeah, this is definitely the one we want. Plus 30% power restoration and defense. That's not bad. Assuming it's for raw power. And damage resistance and weapon accuracy. That's actually a really good set of armor. But, like, is power restoration. So I don't know what the difference is between power restoration and biotic recharge speed. But let's go with this. And four augment slots. All right, do we even have any augments? Do I need to craft augments first? Um, let's select the blueprint. And yeah, we do have some of these. Not sure we got them, but that's okay. And this is the one we already... I don't, I don't think we, we researched it, but did we... We didn't actually make it, so I don't know. I guess I can make more of these. And I guess you can combine them too. Like if I had one of these in each of my, well, no, okay. I want this in my weapon. I don't want this in my chest because that gives you this. Um, plus five percent to all combo radiuses. This is good. Reaction displacer. But I don't know where you get this at. You yeah, have to do some more research. Some more real life research into these. Um, so I don't know. I don't want to use this in case it's not something that you can get like at a vendor or with research. All right, let's just go ahead and equip some stuff in here because this won't be my armor for the rest of the game, presumably. I'll go back and make higher level versions at some point. Um, plus two power damage or what's that biotic one? That's definitely good. And you could just do a, like multiple ones of those. This is for combat duration boost. Yeah, let's go with this two of these, I guess. And um, there's how much it costs. So a decent chunk. I wonder if. Let me just undo this real quick. So 60, 240, 120, 30. Is there a none? 60, 240, 120. Okay, so it's. It doesn't seem like the materials are changing here. I thought maybe it would just incorporate the materials in the total cost. But that does not seem to be the case. All right, well, let's go ahead and craft. Um, yeah, I think this is a fine name. I like that you can name them, especially your weapons. I got really into naming my armor and my uh, weapons and all in Inquisition, but not that excited to do it here. So enter. Yay. And I got an achievement for craftsmanship. Go me. Okay. Um, I do want to make my other stuff now. Um, this gives you more shields. This is like headshot and ammo. And... Okay, so this gives me 7% or 7 damage resistance, 15% accuracy. I only have like a Mark 1 and 7 helmet, 2% max shields, and I like the biotic power damage though. I really need to do more research into these augments. I'm also worried about my copper stuff not being um, not having that much left. My other kind of concern is that I don't want to spend all my materials and augments here and then only, you know, only to replace them down the road. Decisions, decisions. All right, let's go ahead and just um, save our materials for now. Because I don't want to have to spend a bunch of time like farming more materials. Um, I like this game, but I'm not that into this game. So we have our new chess piece at something. And when I get more Milky Way data, however I'm supposed to be doing that, then we can make the stuff I actually really want to make. So let's go to the loadout screen, put on our new armor, and then we'll call this an episode. Uh, loadout is over here. So this is how they get you, though. They give you, they like, tease you with things you actually want, and then you go like, crap, now I need to do all these tedious tasks to actually get the things that will allow me to uh, make the things I want.
All right, so we're going to replace this with N7 armor. And so I guess there's augments and there's also like an upgrade slot, which is different. And then these are extra bonuses from the augments that were built into it. What do I have right now? 5% weapon damage, more ammo, and so that's not bad. But this is definitely more tailored to my build. And yeah, it does have one mod slot. Um, so this gives you better defense. Plus 50%. I kind of like this one, actually. It's definitely a bad deal, because if your shields ever go down, you are you know, pretty much screwed. Your health won't last very long. But it gives you a lot more shields. You have to be more cautious with it. Let's try and see how it goes. All right. I don't like to look at that helmet though. I'd like to replace that. Yeah, let's, well, yeah, let's go ahead and, um, I probably should confirm that. Let's go make a helmet just cause I like to look at the N7 helmet better than the one I'm currently wearing. The cat helmet or whatever it is. All right, develop uh, armor helmet. And we want to make, even though it's only level one, and seven helmet, geez, 50, 50, that's copper, I think, right? It's quite a bit. Um, augments. So I really don't like the idea of using all my augments on things that I don't know if I can get more of, or that using the augments if I can't get more of them. This is combat power, so I don't even have. Sure, more health is always good. Enter. All right, so we made two items. And once we equip this, I will uh, call the episode, and then when we come back, we will continue with the main quest. At least that'll be a little more exciting. Armor. Nope, that's not the armor, that's my squad. Which we should also probably change. All right, I don't have a great helmet anyway. This is what combat power damage I don't even use. 4% weapon damage is nice, but shields and body power damage, and then these upgrades. There we go. Uh, at least looks better. While we're at it, let's go ahead and change out Korra and Drac. Do we actually use them that much, though? I don't know that we did. I don't think I had them on Volt. I think I switched them out in preparation for um, Aya, which we didn't really do any combat. At. Okay, let's keep them for now. All right, well, that was crafting episode number one. Um, I know nothing too exciting there. We didn't really make anything that great. Here I was thinking that tier five was the highest tier, but apparently we still have a long ways to go and we are in desperate need of Milky Way data to get there. So I'm gonna take a quick break and we do a little bit of research uh, on the web and see where to get data, what kind of rifle I really want. And um, yeah, then we'll probably just continue on with the main quest. I'd like to kind of stop at some point and hopefully have enough data to make like a tier six or tier seven version of my entire armor set and uh, and to have all the augments i want and then to be like good to go for the rest of the game but i'm not really sure how much game is left at this point i guess two of the five planets something like that um we'll just kind of have to see as we go so anyway thank you all for uh sticking with me and uh stay tuned for the continuation of the main quest